Today, Lesson 9C, today's a day where we're really going to find out whether you truly understand how to dilate a figure or not, and then putting everything together, uh, because we are dilating without a grid, and that's exactly the reason why, one of the reasons why I have a ruler today, so you're going to need to make sure that you utilize the ruler, because we're going to have to do some measuring, since we don't have a grid. So let's go ahead and get started. A little bit of background knowledge. Similar figures and dilations have a lot to do with each other. Dilation leads to similar figures. We deal with uh, similarity statements that tell us the relationship between the two. And when we have similar figures or dilations, congruent angles are con uh, excuse me, corresponding angles are congruent, and these. Uh, Corresponding sides are proportional to each other. And both of these ideas on corresponding angles being congruent and the corresponding sides being proportional So we're only doing three problems today and each one will probably take five or six minutes. For example, what's one of the first things that you should probably do? And a hint to you, it has nothing to do with measuring the size of that triangle. What? Extend out the lines. Extend out the lines. You know, every day that we've dealt with dilations, that's what I've said. Start with that, because your dilation has to lie on that. And, and let me ask you this. Do you really need to measure the size of that triangle right now? No. You don't. Now, we will when we want to prove that the dilation and that original pre-image are similar to one another, but you don't need to measure them. Where do you need to measure? You're going to have to do some measuring, but where do you need to measure? M to like What's that? M to A, B, or C. Yeah, exactly. I didn't, understand. I didn't hear you say A, B, C. Uh, right. You want to measure from the center of dilation to each <laughs> vertex because... Not only are the side lengths of the triangle given... So the first thing that we should always do when we're dilating, and this is not the first time that I've said this, is you should extend out uh, lines from your center of dilation through each vertex, like this. Because your dilation will lie on those lines. In other words, the vertexes or vertices for, uh, for the dilation will be on those lines. So from there, we need to do some measuring. We need to measure from M to A. Because the distance from M to A prime will be double that distance. Or that's what we want it to be because we're trying to create something where the sides are two times longer. And then uh, from, we need to measure from M to C because the distance that we want from M to C prime is double that distance. And then the same thing from M to B. So can we get some sort of consensus as to, uh, let me... Um, let me change pen color here. Uh, can we get some sort of consensus as to how far it is from M to A? We're going to see how, how close you guys are at measuring. 18 millimeters. Whoa. We were supposed to measure in uh, millimeters, not yeah. centimeters. So how many millimeters? 18. 18, yes. Some of you may have had 19, and I'm okay if you're off by a millimeter. But from here to here, it's 18 millimeters. So from M to A prime, now wherever A prime is, let's just pretend for a second that it's right there. Uh, that would mean it would need to be 36 millimeters. 
because once again, we want the sides to be two times longer, so therefore the distance from the center of dilation to our, each of our vertices will have to be double the distance. All right, could I get, uh, can we get some sort of consensus on how far it was from M to C? How many? I'm hearing 50, I'm hearing 51, I'm hearing 52. Uh, all of those are very reasonable. When I measured it this morning, uh, from here to here, I got 51. Or actually, yeah, I think I got 51. So, 51 millimeters. So that means from here to C prime, which I accidentally went ahead and clicked on it, that would have to be 102 millimeters. And what was the distance from, um, and I'm drawing not very neatly here, how far was it from A to B? What? I'm hearing 58, 59. When I measured this morning, I came up with 58 meters. And 59 is just as reasonable. So that means B prime, which is way down here, will have to be double that. Or in my case, 116 millimeters. If you got 59, that's 118 millimeters. So when you do that, let me take all that big mess off, we get C prime, which is right there. And notice that it certainly looks like it's double the distance as it is from M to C. This is about twice that distance, and so on. So let me go ahead and plot the rest. Here's where A prime would be. Here's where C prime would be, or excuse me, B prime. And then we connect them all together and take away the lines so that it's a little more clear. That is the dilation with M being the center of dilation. OK? So now, what we need to do is we need to prove that, as I dilate this thing, there it is, uh, I want to want you to prove that the two triangles are similar to each other. Now, there's two ways of doing that, or there's two things you should be doing. One of them is comparing the side lengths to the pre-image and the image and making sure that they are proportional. So go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to pass out a protractor so that you can then measure the angles to prove that the angles are congruent to each other. All right, as we're getting the, the ideas of how to prove whether these two are truly similar or not, can I get some measurements here? Somebody throw out an A prime, C prime for me, please. What? I can't hear you. 66? Is that right? Some of you may have been one millimeter off. That's fine. So what was AC, 33? Of course, we should know that uh, they should simplify to 2 because of the fact that the sides are supposed to be 2 times longer. Somebody throw out a B prime, C prime for me. What? 82? So does that make BC 41? It must. Somebody throw out an A prime, B prime. What? 84, and that would make AB 42. They all simplify to 2, which means that the scale factor is 2. Now, I realize some of you may have been off on those measurements by a millimeter or 2, but just make sure for the rest of the problems that you're a little more careful uh, with your measuring. Now, we've now proven that all of the corresponding sides are proportional. Now we need to take a look at the angles. So, somebody give me an angle A. What's that? 43 degrees? 40 what? Okay, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use 40 degrees, okay? So, what's uh, A prime? It should be the same. If it's not, something's not right. Corresponding angles are supposed to be congruent. How about angle B? 50 what? 53, 54, I'll use 53. And uh, angle B prime better be 53 as well. How about angle C? 85? Well, that thing looks like it's almost... Yeah, well, it doesn't look like it's 90, but it looks like it's really, really close to 90. Uh, I'll, t I'll take 80. Wait, it can't, if it's, 
There's one other thing we have to pay attention to here. If I'm going to use 40 and 53, I can't use 85. What would I have to use? 87, because those should be, uh, remember the angle sum theorem in a triangle, uh, they have to add up to uh, 180 degrees. But the idea here is this. To prove the two triangles are similar, the corresponding sides need to be proportional and the corresponding angles need to be congruent to one another. I've been saying that every day since we started doing dilations. Okay. Now, for the second part of this problem, uh, I, I know it does say to prove, and I'm not going to make you prove it on this one. I just want you to draw it. So the second problem, now we're using... Um, N as the center of dilation, we want to create a triangle that is uh, where the side lengths are half that of triangle ABC. You don't have to uh, prove it on this one. I just want you to create that dilation. Does it matter if it's like the exact same? Like it's it's got to be from dilation point N. Well, the dilation will have to be looking very, very similar in the same position, just smaller. So I'm going to start once again by connecting from or drawing lines from the center of dilation through each vertex like that. And then I need to measure the distance from N to A and N to B and N to C. And since we're trying to create side lengths that are half that uh, length, that also means that the distance from N to A or n to a prime should be half the distance as it was from n to a, and the same thing for each vertex. So there is c prime. Notice that it is half the distance. There is a prime. Notice it is half the distance. And there is b prime. Notice that it is half the distance that it was. If you look at the entire distance and cut that in half, there's the distance to b prime right there. And then we connect them all together. And I'll take away those lines to make it a little more clear. There is a dilation. And notice that the side lengths should be half the length of ABC as well. So if I asked you to prove, you would have to prove that the side lengths, the corresponding side lengths are proportional, and you would have to measure each angle and prove that the corresponding angles are congruent. Let's go to the back side of your notes. One more problem. This one. We're doing it all the way through. Dilate and prove that the two triangles are similar to one another. And this time, the center of rotation is at point A, which actually makes this one a little easier. You should have started the dilation by extending your lines out. And there were only two on this one, since we are dilating from point A. And then you should have measured from A to C and then tripled that for A to C prime because we're trying to create a shape where the side lengths are three times as long as they were in triangle ABC. So that would put C prime about right there and do the same from A to B to find A to B prime. And of course, A prime will lie right on top of A. And we create our triangle and it looks like that. From there, to prove that the two triangles are similar, when you compared A prime, C prime, for example, over uh, AC, you better have, it better have simplified to 3 to prove that all of the uh, proportional or all of the corresponding sides are proportional. And then when you measure the angles, obviously A will be congruent to A prime. That's called the reflexive property in geometry. But C and C prime should be congruent, and B and B prime should be congruent. So that is it for today.